guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to take a look at some of your garden before and afters. I've been really looking forward to this video in particular because I don't know of anybody who doesn't like a good before and after. They're so inspiring and motivating to look at and I've got some areas that could use some attention out in my own garden. So to see some of the creative ideas you guys come up with, it's always super helpful. Before we jump in, I did wanna mention that the next video like this one will be all about front yards. So I'll go over those details at the end of this video, but I think we should just jump right in with the first submission, which is from Shalena in Florida, zone 8B. Oh, the background is gorgeous. And I don't know if you did this on purpose or if it was a happy accident, but the tree in the background looks positioned perfectly. Like you put your space to where that tree is your backdrop. That is perfect. I love seeing big trees like that all on their own out in the middle of like grassy area. It looks very pastoral and being able to see the structure of that whole tree is beautiful. I would love that whole scene right there around my entire property. I think that would, be, that would be beautiful. I would give a lot to have that sort of backdrop. And I'm guessing based on where this garden is, it might have started out all grass. I could be wrong, but it looks like you've cut out a space in order to put in a raised bed garden. So let's take a look at the next picture. Oh my goodness. You guys, cutting a little section of grass out and creating something like this. That's amazing. It's so full. The first thing I notice about this is the arbor. I love seeing arbors like that. I love using them in my own space because they beckon you. You see one, you wanna walk under it. You wanna walk through it, see what's on the next side. And it almost indicates like a new room or a new space in the garden. And the four by four, uh, I think they're four by four posts holding up the patio lights that also kind of brings closure, enclosure to the space. I hope you included a night picture because I would love to see that space lit up at night. But it looks based on this picture that you've got row crops possibly in the background. Let's see, you did include some information. Let's check it out. So Shalina says this is her potager garden that they created after they built their new home and the pictures show progression over three years. Okay, so let's take a look at the next picture. Oh yeah, so that looks like it was maybe shortly after the before shot. So you have your raised beds filled. Uh, you have a top dress down and your little evergreens, I think those are arborvitas, planted in the front. I think that's so helpful to see that it doesn't go from before to after like that. You know, it takes years sometimes to get your space, well most of the time it takes years to get your space looking the way you want it to and it's just a process. And yeah, we all have to go through that to create these new sorts of spaces. Uh, Shalena said they started with four raised beds that her husband built and added some in-ground rows behind it for row crops, growing a mixture of flowers and edibles. Uh, so since they live in a zone 8B, they can grow year round and this is her happy place. Oh my, there's a night shot you guys. Oh, that's so beautiful. We need to add more patio lights around in our garden. That just looks so inviting and look at you there, enjoying by the fire. Oh. Great job, Shalina. That was a beautiful one to start with. Next one is from Gwyneth in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, zone seven. So here is the before. Ooh, there's a nice, I like the railing around your deck. That's really pretty. But the flower bed, I believe, is the before we are looking at here. I can't tell exactly what's in there. There might be some hosta and some shrubs that are quite large, maybe kind of a little bit too large for that space. Gwyneth said, messy quince I only liked in spring, dying Japanese Andromeda and a lilac. Okay, so moved everything out and replaced with, oh, there's a list of plants. So let's take a look at the after. Oh, oh, you did a beautiful job. <gasps> okay, so I see peach roses. I see in the middle there a ruby, I'm guessing a ruby falls red bud. I've had one before. Yep, weeping ruby falls red bud. That's the center plant, right? By that center post. And then my eye is totally drawn by those, it looks like Pugster, Budlia, butterfly bushes up against the house. <laughs> Look at the color on those. Well, of course the addition of mulch too really helps keep everything nice and tidy. So Gwyneth, here's a list of plants that she included. The Weeping Ruby Falls Red Bud, Peach Drift Roses, Russian Sage, Spilled Wine Wygilla, Dwarf Golden Thread Branch Cypress, a Blue Star Juniper and Muley Grass. Uh, she got the Wygilla and Muley Grass on a great sale at Lowe's in November. The Wygilla survived, but the Muley Grass died back quite a bit. Might have to replace, guessing it was too late to plant them. And that's how we learn, right? You know, it's just, it's fun to try different things out. And sometimes when they take, it's awesome. And sometimes we have to adjust and do something different. And that's fine too. But I really like what the plants you've chosen because 
when you take a look at this, you can see all the colors. Usually, and my mom taught me this when we were doing landscape design and helping put plants together, you wanna to try to shoot for four colors in a flower bed. Uh, yellow, blue, green, and red. And whether it's just like a tiny touch of yellow in the variegation of a grass, or you know, having some red-leaved foliage in there like you've got with your red bud and your wajila. When you've got all four of those colors together, it really somehow pulls a space together. Um, so you can see the Russian sage is adding your blue because it's kind of that silvery color. You've got green in the leaf color of the roses. You've got red in the wajila and red bud, and then you've got the gold uh, cypress right there that really brings a bright pop. Beautiful job. Next is from Shelly in Maine, zone five. Let's take a look at the before. Fairly stark, I mean, this looks like it might be in the winter time. There are a few little shrubs out there, uh, one great big evergreen, but the shrubs don't have leaves. So I'm guessing winter time. Let's take a look at the after. <gasps> oh my goodness. <gasps> you wanna come design my flower beds? <laughs> look at the, how beautiful. I, I can't even believe the first shot was even the same house. Okay, well, one, this is in season, so you can see leaves on the tree in the back, and the trees in the background. It looks like a complete overhaul has gone down in this flower bed with beautiful uh, shredded bark mulch on the top, giving it that super tidy, clean look, but the color here. Okay, so let's see what Shelly has to say about her space. Her new garden space is designed for relatively low maintenance for a senior, using small growing shrubs and trees with multi-season interest, as well as perennials and spring bulbs that don't need a lot from me. We bought this home in a retire com retirement community four years, only four years ago? Dang, you've come a long way in four years. When our yard had to be dug up for a new septic system, it was the perfect opportunity to create a garden space that will be fairly low maintenance for a senior, but still very satisfying and beautiful. Carrie Ann, oh, Carrie Ann Mendez. I know Carrie Ann, she's an amazing lady. I've had the uh, opportunity to chat with her several times at the Grand Garden Show and a couple other times at different shows. She's awesome. Carrie Ann Mendez designs beautiful garden spaces and she is local for me. She and I had to work virtually due to the pandemic, so I sent her photo. So if this happened during the pandemic, this uh, garden transformation, this is only a couple of years old. Oh. So they worked virtually, so I sent her photos, sun exposure, a sketch with the shape and sizes of the garden space I wanted to create, plus a list of favorite shrubs and perennials. Okay, so here are a few things that are in this space. Ruby Tears Weeping Crab Apple, the one kind of to the left there, well, it's my left, I think it, you'll be seeing it on the left there, just off from the um, top of the stairs. Ivory Halo Dogwood, Cester's Dwarf Blue, uh, Blue Spruce, perfect for this size of space. Cester's don't get very big. Green Velvet Boxwood, Ditsia, the Yuki Cherry Blossom, Little Quick Fire Hydrangea, Bright Pink Manchurian Azalea, Dark Knight Caryopteris, Bobo Hydrangea, Spice Baby Korean Spice Viburnum, Double Play Big Bang Spirea, Pink Lemonade Baptisia, Lavender, Cranesville Geraniums, Echinacea, and more. She said, I did spend quite a bit on the garden, but I started with a few foundation pieces and then watched for special, specials and end of season sales um, over two garden seasons. I have been gardening for years, but I'm learning so much from you. Oh, sweet. That is just Shelly, beautiful space. And it looks like you are maintaining it just wonderfully. Next is from Eric and Christopher in New York zone 5B. Let's take a look at the first before. Okay, so we've got an interesting shaped flower bed right there, kind of out in the middle of the grass. I think this is a before shot. Nice mulch though, we always try to do that when we start new flower beds. Whether or not we've got plants to put in them, it just helps so much, just keep weeds down and keep the soil nice. Uh, so let's take a look at the after. Whoa, so you were anticipating, I'm gonna bounce back to the first one. There's no fence in that picture. After, there's a fence. So you knew that was going in, that that would be your backdrop there. Dang. Okay, I gotta study this for a minute. I see, like starting in the front, I see Euphorbia and Heuchera, and I see Boxwood, and I see uh, Ashleaf Spirea, Daisies. I see, is that a smoke bush? With that beautiful deep colored foliage, a red bud there. Oh my goodness, they're, they're geraniums, hydrangea. Coleus, is that the red in the background? Oh my word. Okay. So Eric and Christopher finished building their home in 2018 and it was a completely blank slate for landscaping. Neither of them had ever gardened before. <laughs> oh geez. So we saw guidance on uh, 
on YouTube, lo and behold, oh, we came across Garden Answer and the rest is history. Oh, that's so encouraging to me to hear that. This entire garden and our deep true love of gardening all started with your Pearl Glam Beauty Berry video. Don't worry, ours, ours died too. Thank you, that makes me feel better. Over the past few years, we've soaked up everything we could possibly uh, learn about gardening, visiting gardens, reading, watching, subscribing, learning, and growing. We even started an Instagram called Grow For Me 5B. Grow For Me 5B. Hang on. Oh, there you are. Followed. To document our gardens. The two before and after I have submitted are our foundation bed and then number two. Oh, there's another one. Okay, front of their house. It looks like a tricolor beach, a beautiful one, beautiful shape. Tricolor beach, I don't know if it's like this for you. Here, they grow so darn slow and it takes forever for them to get to size. We have such a harsh climate um, that they, we kind of use them as accent trees, even though the tag says they'll get like 25 feet wide or something like, or 25 feet tall maybe, can't remember. Um, but we could kind of keep ours tamed. Uh, that is a beautiful, beautiful color there. You can see some boxes right below the window and then Russian sage along the walkway, a cypress of some kind, uh, maybe some spirea in there. Let's take a look at the after. Whoa, whoa, that's changed. And they did say that the foundation bed has changed the most over the years and might even change again this spring. Oh, I don't even know why, that's so pretty. <laughs> I know it, I know how that is though, because you keep finding new things that you like and so you kind of shift things around, but I love the different colors of green you have going on in here, lots of different shades. Looks like you've added, you took the cypress, maybe I'm seeing this from the wrong angle. Hold on, let me go back, because it looks like the evergreen placement has changed. The one that was near the driveway is gone and it looks like there's a new one to the left of the window that's got the nice tall, and I think that's a good move. That was a great move because the, the one at the very beginning might have looked like it blocked off the door, the view to the door, maybe in the end. Um, so getting that away and putting a boxwood there instead and, and maybe some hydrangeas there in front. And then I am not sure what kind of super tunia that is. I'm guessing it's a super tunia, maybe a mini Vista Indigo or a Mulberry Charm, something like that. that have the littler blooms, but absolutely beautiful. And the grass is gorgeous. What a perfect pairing of texture and different shades of green. And the tricolor beach, of course, is just phenomenal. Oh, Eric and Christopher, great job. And I'm looking forward to seeing updates on Instagram. Next one is from Stephanie in the UK in Bristol, zone 6B. I have been to Bristol before. Let's take a look at the before. Okay, a backyard, just a blank slate. There's a shed in the back there, and it's just kind of worked up soil, it looks like. Let's take a look at the after. Whoa. Oh, it's so lush and green and colorful. That is beautiful. So a raised bed addition in the back to give you some height. I like the trellis, or the, rather the arbor in the background, kind of bringing a little bit of architecture to that area. The wall planter on the shed. Oh, the bright pink table actually helps quite a bit too, seeing that bright pop of color there. Beautiful job. So Stephanie said, new build garden on very old farmland. Quite common for new builds in the UK to have very poor soil left by the house builder. I, I don't think that that's uh, common just to the UK. I think it just kind of happens, uh, you know, with all the compaction from equipment and things like that in new build areas, uh, especially when it comes to drainage. Yes, that's a tough one. A lot of people in our area give up on grass, going for fake instead. Uh, obviously England is quite wet, but we are determined with ours and it's so far surviving our first winter. We had the raised bed built first and it's been amazing. The garden is mostly north facing, but as summer comes, we steadily get a really decent amount of sun. My daughter loves helping uh, and picking things to eat. That is beautiful. Great job, Stephanie. Great job. I see cosmos and dahlias in there. <sighs> Cannot wait for color in my garden. It's hard to go months without it, isn't it? Next is from Teresa in Ontario, Canada, zone 6A. Here is the before. Okay, so it looks like this is a side yard. Very charming house. Love the backdrop of all the trees, the evergreens, the big deciduous trees. You can tell that that's something we lack so much in this area is finding that. Um, I love the twig chairs sitting there. Oh, I learned how to build twig furniture when I was young. My parents took us up into the mountains where ladies were doing a workshop on it. I have very fond memories of that. Anyway, side yard with a lot of potential. Let's look at the after. Whoa, what? Look at how beautiful. 
So you have really created some nice deep flower borders. I think, I think that's where I see a, like a common, not garden mistake, because nothing can really be termed a mistake if it's something that you like and you wanna put it in your garden, awesome. But I think a lot of people don't make their flower borders deep enough. Uh, and I think like six feet minimum um, should be kind of the standard because it gives you so much more so many more options in terms of planting. So seeing nice deep beds where you can do lots of beautiful layering and combinations is wonderful. Love the flagstones through the grass too. I think that is awesome. And the sharp line too. The sharp line between the grass and the flower bed is always so satisfying to see. Okay, so what does Teresa have to say? The first picture is from June 2016 when we moved in. As soon as I saw the red garage, I thought it would be a lovely backdrop for a garden. It's a garage for a garden. As long as the house was not a complete wreck, I was sold. The second picture is from August 2021, and we are amazed at the progress this garden made. So five years later, you know, that's amazing. That's amazing progress. Beautiful, Teresa. Next is from Amy in Minnesota, zone 3B, a super cold growing zone. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you've done with a season that's not very long. Okay, before. Okay, so we've got what looks to be either a shed or a garage. You've painted some lines, maybe some future planning there, and you've got a chair sitting there. It looks like maybe you want to put a fire pit where the circle is. You're kind of getting a feel for the space. That's important to do. In fact, I was just telling Aaron, I need to go stand in front of the greenhouse, just stand there and just move around that space and see how it feels and see where the pathway should go and all of that. I think that's so important to get some lines down the way you've done there. Let's take a look at the after. Is it? Is that the same space? Whoa. That is gorgeous. To have the vision, to take what it was before to this, that is incredible, bravo. Good job on that. Oh, the evergreens, trees in the background, absolutely beautiful. Those really add to the very cozy feel of this space. But taking this space from what it was to a place that you can really utilize and enjoy and and working with the terrain too like creating the raised beds you had a little bit of a slope there so creating a little bit of a different layer that adds so much to a space so amy says this before and after started with a sad ring of rocks in our backyard grass that transformed it into an awesome garden shed fire pit patio which we started in 2019 and completed in 2020 so just in two seasons <gasps> Um, I live in zone 3B, so we have a very short growing summer season, so this project needed to span two years just due to construction schedule and time needed to complete each phase. I totally understand that. That's actually amazing that you got it all done in that amount of time too. Our projects tend to, to span over multiple seasons. With the exception of the poured concrete patio and the transport of fill and topsoil needed to level the area and finish the grade, my husband and I did all the work ourselves, including building the shed laying the retaining wall block, paver edging, drip irrigation, mulch, and plantings. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into this DIY project, but it's been a great addition to our backyard. I should say so. Oh my goodness. So there's a list of plants that I will run through really quickly. Um, perennials and trees that she's included thus far are autumn blaze maple, red twig dogwood, uh, real neat shasta daisies, Helen von Stein lamb's ear, autumn fire sedum, uh, some liatris, coral bells, Carl Forrester, uh, Calamagrata, Cheyenne spirit echinacea, dwarf Alberta spruce, Japanese silvergrass, cat mint, bobo, little lime, and quick fire hydrangeas, Rebecca coreopsis, pink parfait, Sar Siberian iris, holy moly, uh, pretty in pink and raspberry splash, lungwort, visions and red astilbe, dark towers penicita, or pensman rather, and perennial salvia. My word, and your window box looks gorgeous too. Carol Cooper in Seattle, Washington, zone 8B is next. Here is the before. Oh, see, I see anything like this that's full and lush and green, and I think it's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> the shed in the background is so sweet. I love the siding and the age and like the little moss on the roof. That's really pretty. Looks like there's an old lilac blooming over the top of it. And uh, it looks like maybe a rhododendron, but there's something else growing in maybe on top of it there. Lots of, lots of pretty color in that picture. Let's see, Carol says, from an overgrown nearly 100 year old garden along the only sunny spot, two vegetable raised beds and containers and what became a dahlia bed. We dug out stepping stones, a bird bath and all sorts of old debris from this hedge, most of which we have reused elsewhere in the garden. This all happened over four growing seasons. 
Wow, it looks like a space that has breathing space, breathing room now, because you can actually see what plants are in there, like the rhododendron there in bloom. Uh, whatever was growing over the top of it was removed and you can actually see the plant. It doesn't look like it's being choked out. There's a lot of pretty color here. I mean, I can see some allium or chives maybe in that little terracotta pot up front. Um, there's a blooming honeysuckle. The lilac again is in bloom. And it looks like the red leaved tree might be a borrowed view from the neighbor's garden, uh, but that's a beautiful color. How lucky to have that right over the fence from you. Just really nice. And I like these stepping stones and it maybe that soap wort. Is that soap wort leading up? Like the ground cover in between, that's kind of how mine used to bloom. Um, when I had, well, I think I still have soap wort out there. I'm gonna have to move it because it's right behind the Hartley. But uh, the stepping stones leading up to the shed makes it look like, like I wanna go out there. When you make it easy and you make it um, look more open, it just facilitates movement through the garden so much easier and, and better, I think. Beautiful, Carol. Next one is from Leanne in Saskatchewan, Canada, zone 3-4. Now this one, I immediately recognized her name because we've uh, corresponded before. Uh, this is their healing garden in memory of their middle son, Tyson. So let's take a look at uh, the before shot. So you can see just this huge expansive area. Uh, it looks like there's a tree, a couple trees planted out there and then a a circular pattern kind of worked into the grass. So let's take a look at the after. Isn't that glorious? I think that is just such a beautiful space. Oh, I love the curvy walkway, the fountain, the seating area, the multiple different spots in there. Um, so like different places to go and reflect and think. And uh, I see the arbor, I see an obelisk in there. There's a bistro set out back. There's a bench there set to where you can see the fountain. Uh, so uh, Leanne says, my husband and I created this garden from a blank piece of lawn on our acreage all by ourselves and it has been a beautiful place to heal, grieve and connect with our son. This garden is two and a half years old. The perimeter shrubs are lilacs and limelight hydrangeas that will grow to be about six to eight feet tall one day, which will be a beautiful backdrop. The trees are Schubert choke cherries, gladiator crab apple, and a small ornamental plum. We hope to add a few smaller accent trees and shrubs this coming spring, and one day put a wrought iron bird cage gazebo around the back brick patio. In the back right corner is the cutting garden where we love to make bouquets to give away as random acts of kindness in our son's honor. We have a Facebook page called Tyson's Light where we share the random acts of kindness we do as well as our healing journey, which that's so amazing that you're using a space like this to help heal and help bring peace and then also feed other people at the same time. I think that is so awesome. Um, our biggest challenge is that we live in a very dry climate without access to water. We have to haul in our water monthly for our house and pump water from our pond into a tank to water the gardens, dang. Unfortunately, our pond is drying up more and more each year with the severe droughts, but that won't stop us from doing what we love in the garden. Determination and it's paying off. Absolutely beautiful, Leanne. It's good to see your garden again. Next is from Leslie in Alabama, zone 7B. And it looks like there are a couple of different sets of before and afters. So this first one looks like it's the area to the left of a, what might be the garage. And there's not a whole lot going on here other than you know grass and the concrete. So let's look at the after. My goodness. So I noticed you put in a rock border. That's always really nice and a nice indicator uh, between flower bed and grass. And it's a little bit of a, a low maintenance one because you're not edging grass all the time. Uh, it looks like you've put in some daylilies and roses and a beautiful arbor up against the wall there that really provides a lot of interest. Um, Leslie said this is uh, her COVID garden that she started after her mom, uh, who also gardens introduced me to your show. Awesome. I binge watched and then headed to the plant store. Now I'm hooked. A big struggle was flooding. It rains nonstop here. So we're talking Alabama again. After planting everything, it rained and everything was sitting in several inches of water. I had to dig everything up by tons of dirt, build up the garden bed and form tiny retaining walls to direct water away from the plants. Dang. It's mostly perennials, but I'm slowly adding my winter interest since we don't have snow and it just looks brown and bland in the winter. My goodness. Okay, so let's see the second shot here. 
is alongside the garage or is alongside the house there. You can see the paint lines. See how helpful that is? Because you can see a couple different tries, which I always have multiple tries, uh, you know, different lines along there. And then I have to go along eventually and make the one that I actually want a lot darker than the rest of them so I don't accidentally cut where I don't want it to be cut. But it's so handy to paint that out and then live with it for a couple of days and look at it from all different angles and see if you need to broaden it in places or make it skinnier or make a different shape or what have you. And here is the after. Oh, another trellis. See how helpful that is? They're so beautiful. I love that shape of trellis too. You can see plain the blue salvia, more daylilies, maybe some dahlias in there, cannas. There's some creeping jenny, some perennial salvia, lamb's ear. That catches my eye. See that in the back? That blue, like right below. Okay, so there's all the colors right here. If you look back there, you see the arborvita, kind of the tall winter structure back there. Right in front of that, you've got the Japanese maple, which has some sort of uh, grassy thing back there. And then, so that's really good textural difference. Right in front of the Japanese maple, you have the bright blue lamb's ear. In front of that, you have the, le looks like maybe lemon coral sedum, and then maybe some red coleus. And see how beautiful that is all together? Oh, beautiful plant pairings. And I like the little stone walkways going through so you can access all areas. That's super handy. That's one thing I noticed about our flower beds here at this house when we moved in. A lot of them were so deep that they had placed str strategically some round stepping stones that you didn't really notice, but it enabled you to have a place to stand where you weren't standing on a plant when you needed to get in and do some maintenance work. So that's always really nice. And the last garden space we're gonna look at today is from Kim in South Korea, zone 6A. Here is the before. Isn't it fun to see gardens from all over the place, like all over the globe today. I love it. So this space, there's some grass, looks like a trellis on the ground, some uh, chairs sitting around a vegetable garden to the left and a shed, maybe for storage there in the back. Let's take a look at the after. Oh my goodness, you put in a greenhouse. Oh, that's a beautiful one too. And what an amazing use of this space. So Kim says, uh, she gave up on the lawn because of her two dogs. Half of the lawn died from their running, so we built this greenhouse in the center of uh, her small garden. I was sad that I couldn't see the beautiful green grass anymore, but I got the space to do sewing in the winter. Um, oh, she's got a YouTube channel. I don't see a name there, but there is a link. Maybe we can include that down below. I really enjoy your channel and appreciate your useful information. That is so sweet. Thank you, Kim. I gotta take a closer look at this greenhouse. So it's up on a deck. Uh, and there's stones around, some flagstones with some gravel. I really like that look. That looks super clean. And uh, while I understand, you know, not looking out at the grass, because I am a grass person, I like to see grass uh, in some areas. I feel like this is such a good use of your space because it looks like you get a lot of sunshine in this area. So greenhouse growing is going to be perfect. And what a way to maximize if you want to do produce or you want to be able to garden more of the year. This is a great way to do it. I see the storage shed still in the back um, and a lot of beautiful plants around potted and otherwise and in the landscape. Wow. And taking a look at this picture where you can kind of see in the greenhouse, there's a little umbrella in there to maybe provide a little bit of reprieve from some sun. But is that a Japanese maple in the back? Maybe in, is that in your yard or maybe another yard? And then I see the mountain, the hill in the background, all covered in green. How beautiful. Love it. Well, that was a fun group of pictures to go through. Thank you so much to all of you guys who took the time out to send us pictures and all the information. I appreciate it so much. I'm feeling very inspired by all of the wonderful things that you guys have come up with. It is just fun just to get a, a little view into what you're doing in your space and what things bring you joy. It's just, it's really fun. And I, it makes us, I don't know, all feel connected in a way. So anyway, thank you to all of you who sent them out. Now for the next video, we're gonna be focusing on front yards. We just wanna see what you've done. If you have a before picture, include it. If you don't, that's fine. We would love to see a backed up shot, if at all possible, showing your house along with your yard. So it's kind of an establishing shot to show what the whole aesthetic looks like maybe from the street. I know we're all kind of relying on pictures from past years uh, because we're a lot of us, you know, our yards don't look the most amazing right now. Uh, but we will put the link to that form in the description below this video so you can just follow that link and fill out the form quick if you would like to participate in that video uh, anyway thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one